Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Jackson and I'm currently a doctoral researcher at King's College London. And here are six strategies for resilience. These are based on my research and from working with nurses. However, I hope that they can apply to other healthcare professionals and people who are interested in fostering a resilience process in their own lives. Just to let you know that this is based on my master's thesis and subsequent work I have done. And this indicates what the original theory that I developed was, followed up by some research that I did with university students. So the link in my description leads to my website. There's lay summaries there. There's also the full thesis and the publications. So there's lots more information that you can check out to provide more detail on anything that you hear about today. So to our six strategies. The first one is protecting. So this is developing a hard shell, which is why we have our um, little crusty friends here. This is to say that when you face adversity, you need to have some kind of shell or defense so that we use phrases like water off a duck or, um, un you know, under a bridge, let it flow down the river, those types of things. So what we want to do is recognize that there are always going to be some kinds of adversity in our lives and some of them we have to just let it let it go. Now that doesn't mean that we use this approach for dealing with everything or that we just never let anything bother us, but it's an understanding based on experience and our own circumstances that there are some things that we're just going to have to be aware of that it's going to happen. Now these things should never be things like sexism, racism, or that type of thing, but we can work to create better workplaces while understanding that, for example, if a patient yells at you while they're delirious, that is just going to happen sometimes and not to take it personally because if someone's not in the right frame of mind, they're not going to be in control of their actions. So we can build a shell to help us protect ourselves when we face adversity. Processing, if I could give one piece of advice to nurses, nursing students, or just the population at large, it would be to talk about what happens to you, whether it be in a formal environment like seeing a psychologist, a social worker, a psychiatrist, or a formal debriefing after a traumatic event, down to a casual chat with friends over a coffee or over drinks, or anything in between, I really encourage by talking about what is happening to us. It helps us to process and to understand what's going on. We can also get feedback from others as to say, you know, I didn't think that that person was really upset with you. It came across differently to me. So it can help us gain some perspective so we're not just going round and round in our own heads. So if I could suggest anything, talk to people about the challenges in your lives. And if you don't have the right people, you can make some new connections or seek out some professional support. This is so important and I encourage it for everyone. We can think about decontaminating. So when we come out of an area where we may have faced radiation or we may have worked with a patient who has uh, infectious diseases, we decontaminate. So we take off our protective equipment, we wash our hands and we walk away. We could do the same thing with adversity. So this is examples of like going and doing fun things with friends on days off or taking time if you are studying and saying, OK, I'm going to study or work on an assignment until 8 p.m. And after that, it's time for me. So think about things that are creative, that are active, that are with other people, things that you like to do that make you feel better. So it's not just about watching Netflix for eight hours, although there may be a place for that every once in a while, but saying, how can I actually help myself feel better? And what does that look like for me? Distancing is to get away from the things that stress you out. For nurses, this was often the bedside, so they would have breaks during their shift to get away from the bedside and collect their thoughts. They would also take annual leave or vacation to make sure that they had regular breaks from working in the clinical environment. This may also mean if you work in an environment where you work at a desk or with a computer all the time, or if you're studying, you may only study at your desk and then the rest of your space is 
used for something else. So you don't take your laptop all over your house. You keep it in one space and that is the space for work. And it provides a mental piece of containment to help you separate things that you find stressful from the rest of your life so that you're able to get away, even if it's only a small distance, so that you can take time to do things that help you recharge before you have to face adversity again. Also, practical strategies are really effective. So this is not to be underestimated. So being organized, having clean working space or having, you know, your scrubs, your food, whatever the case may be, be ready to go out the door to a shift or be ready to go to a placement or a class, whatever that might look like for you. For example, if you're scrambling to try and find your work shoes before you go to work, it's going to be really stressful. However, if you always keep them in the same place and you know where they are, you're not going to be worried, you're not going to arrive anxious, and you'll be able to do better work while you're there. So take some time to be organized and don't underestimate the value of how important that is to a resilience process. And finally, metacognition. So this is where we think about how we think. And the brain doesn't fully develop this capacity until about 25 years old. So if you are younger than that, this might take a little bit more work. But we want to think about how we are thinking. So what this means is you can stop and say, you know what, my thoughts for the last hour have been really anxious and really you know, overwrought. So what I need to do is stop, take five minutes, collect myself, get some perspective, maybe call a friend quickly or do something that helps me to say, okay, I need to replace these thoughts with something that is more helpful for me. Another thing could be to say, you know, my patient died. I'm a failure. I couldn't save them. I'm a horrible nurse. We can work to replace this strategy with something like, I did the best I could. Everyone in the team did the best they could. This person's body had reached its end point and there was nothing that we could do about that. And so this process was a natural one and this is how people's lives conclude. And so while we tried to do everything we could to avoid this, it does not mean I was a personal failure because a patient's death occurred or something along those lines. So whatever the case may be, if you find that your thoughts are just going round and round and round, I really encourage you to consult um, supportive services or healthcare professionals, and they can help develop strategies for this. But it's really important to say, how am I thinking and how can it support me as I do my work or support me as I work to be resilient? So this has been just a brief overview, but I hope these strategies have been helpful. There's lots more information on my Twitter and at my website where I have resources, lay summaries, and worksheets that can help to reflect on resilience and hopefully enable you to thrive and, and be a great nurse. Thank you very much. Take care.